Good morning. Today I thought I'd make a brief video to explain a little bit about how I take care of my canaries. Uh, care, feeding, general maintenance. I have about a dozen birds, or maybe ten at this point. I have five fancy, which are little fluffy little birds that resemble robins, and I also have uh, Irish fancy. And they're a little more slender type birds. So let us start with how we feed the canaries. Okay, in this video I wanted to just give you a little rundown of my routine and what I do as far as feeding and taking care of my canaries. Mostly we're focusing on the feeding aspect on this video. So canaries are very easy to care for, very undemanding in their needs. Uh, you can get a basic canary mix and the seed looks like this. Uh, mixed canary seeds they call it, which is grass that grows naturally in the uh, Mediterranean and the Canary Islands. And so it was their natural diet. And we've continued to feed it even up until today. So canary seed is very nutritious for them. We also will mix in for a little more balance in their diet either some uh, Niger seed or rape seed. Canola rape seed is usually the one that's recommended because other rape seeds are often not as high quality as canola and they are used for industrial purposes. So there is your basic mix. You can uh, get some at, at a pet store or you can order canary mix online. I like to buy from Abba Seed, their canary blend. And as you can see the ingredients, canary seed, niger, hemp, which canaries love, flax, sesame, oats, sunflower, quinoa, poppy, and they also have some egg bread mix and so forth in there. So it's got a lot of different ingredients in it. Now some people, and I don't know anybody personally who feeds um, a pelleted diet, they grind up seeds or the hearts of the seeds and they mix it into a pellet that's a balanced diet and that's all your canary needs. But I think it gives the birds a little more interest when they're feeding. Like in nature, they would forage and they like to pick out the seeds that they enjoy and it gives them a little interest in their life. So I like to give them a seed mix. So this is the basic seed mix that you should have in front of your bird at all times. They should never be without food. They have high metabolism and um, you know they like, to, they like to pick and eat all day long. Now the other seed mix that's commonly uh, recommended is song food. So this is what your typical song food mix looks like. It's a collection of um, more high energy seeds, more fatty seeds, and they're usually darker seeds. And I have this in a different, uh, it came in a bag and I put it into a container. So there is a song food mix, so that's a good supplementary mix if you want to provide that for your birds also. I give them song food mix a couple of times a week. And then I like to give my birds, in addition to their regular canary seed and song food, I give them sprouts every other day. It's not as hard to fix as you might think. You have to buy special seed for sprouting. You can't just buy a regular canary mix that's got seed, uh, got vitamins added because it's usually heat treated and the seeds won't sprout. So you have to look for sprout mix. So this is particularly made for sprouts, for sprouting. And there's also a uh, sprout mix that I buy from Abba Seed. It's called Abba Soak. They call it a soaking mixture. And it's basically the same technique, whichever kind of mix you find. You put a little scoop of the seeds in a sieve and you soak it. I filled this with water yesterday. I let it soak for about 12 hours and I did this yesterday morning. So very simple. You let it soak, put it in in the morning, let it soak all day, drain it off, and then it's going to take about another day. So it's been one day already. By tomorrow, these seeds, and they're already soft. You could feed them this way, they're soft, but once you see them actually starting to sprout, there's, there's one that's got a little bit of a sprout going on. You'll see the little roots coming, you'll see the seed cracking open, 
and that's when they have the most vitamin and mineral content. Now, sprouted seed is a good way to give your birds extra vitamins and protein that they don't get from just unsprouted seed mix. So regular seeds are very low in vitamins. They don't have vitamin A or E. They don't have a lot of protein. But when you sprout them, they become much more nutritious. They become higher in uh, protein. They become higher in vitamin A, vitamin E. So that is a really nutritious thing you can give your birds. And I give it about every other day to my birds. Every morning, or every other morning, I should say, I make a new batch. And you can, if you like, you can add hemp seed. Hemp seed is very high in protein and very high in fat. And of course this is sterilized so that it's not going to sprout. But you, you can soak this and give it to your canary. Soak it overnight, give it to them in the morning, and they will love it. My birds just go through hemp seed like crazy. Now it's very important before, before you feed either the sprouts or the uh, soaked hemp, get some tap water and rinse. Rinse very well because you don't want uh, any possibility of spoilage. And tap water in our area has a lot of chlorine and so forth in it, so it's fine for you and you don't need to do anything beyond just adding tap water. You don't need to put any bleach or anything like that in with your sprouts to rinse them. But it is very important to rinse your sprouts, just like I'm doing here. Rinse them. Okay, they're nice and rinsed. And I'm going to wait another day and then I'll rinse them again tonight. And in the morning I'll rinse them a third time and then I'll feed them to my birds. If it's um, warm weather, these will sprout more quickly. And once they start sprouting also, you could store them in the refrigerator so that they don't spoil and they don't uh, um, sprout too quickly on you. But very important, I wanted to stress that I always rinse, rinse, rinse before I feed sprouts or the soaked hemp to my birds. Then another product that I like to give every other day, on the day that I don't give the soaked seeds or the sprouts, I give some, uh, it's called commercial egg mix, egg food. And what it is, is like a biscuit with high egg content. And they also mix a few little seeds and other goodies in there. I like to buy from Abba Seed because it's very fresh, but there's also commercial brands like uh, CD, C-E-D-E -E is how they spell their name. And this is also food to have on hand that you can give when birds are feeding youngsters in the nest. So even if you don't plan to uh, breed your birds, it's nice to have a little nestling food there to give them. They enjoy it and it's good for them. Okay, and then we're going to also talk a little bit about a special seed mixture that I, uh, that I found that's kind of an optional thing. It's a wildflower seed mix, so we'll talk about that next. And in addition to feeding this commercial nestling supplement or egg food, uh, especially when the birds are breeding and they have youngsters in the nest, I like to make just a regular hard-boiled egg, uh, cut it into slices, and give them a little bit of fresh hard-boiled egg in the morning. And then what they don't eat, remove midday, especially in the hot weather, you don't want your egg going sour. So replace it in the afternoon with a fresh a little slice of hard boiled egg. And the protein in the egg white and the vitamins in the egg yolk are very good for the birds. And as a matter of fact, they're a necessity if they're raising uh, youngsters. But it's good just all year round as a regular tonic for your birds to give them a little bit of egg. The most common problem for cage birds, a veterinarian that I went to that's an avian veterinarian told me the most common problem he sees in birds is protein deficiency and vitamin A deficiency. So this is a good way to get your bird uh, the necessary protein and vitamins, giving them egg food and also giving them hard boiled eggs. This is a supplement that I bought. I was in search for a product called Haith's Craker Tonic, K-R-A-K-E-R, -E and that is a product that you can get in England that is given to the canaries and finches there. It's a, it's a um, combination of different grains and wildflower seeds and pen seed has this, they call it sidekick condition, 35 different ingredients, garden and herb seeds, grasses, flower seeds, niger, hemp, 
millet. You can get it on their website, I think. It's kind of expensive to have it shipped, and I did find it on Amazon, but I find it valuable to have because I believe uh, canaries are naturally foraging in the wild. Canaries and finches, they eat a lot of different wild grains and seeds. They don't just eat canary seed, and they don't just eat uh, rape or niger seed, but they eat, eat a wide variety of seeds and grains in the wild. So I feel like this is a good supplement to give my birds. I feed it to them about a tablespoon or so uh, a week, divided into portions. And I alternate that. Some days I'll give them a little bit of egg food. Some days uh, they might get sprouted seed. And some days they might get sidekick condition. Another important component of their diet is to have some vegetables, fresh greens. They even like fresh fruit from time to time. You can give them slices of apple, uh, guava, oranges, bananas, that kind of stuff. But they really do love fresh greens. And sometimes I'll buy a bag of spring mix and keep that and give them a little bit of the greens from the spring mix every day. And, uh, you know, one bag will last me a week or so. Other times I'll give them each one will get their own little floret of broccoli. So greens, very important for your canary's health. And because it wouldn't be much fun without birds in the video, here are a couple of my five fancy. This is a new little girl that I traded with a, a new fancier. She's very sweet. She's settling right in, I love her. Hopefully I'll get a nest of babies from her this year, but if not this year, then next year. This is my one-year-old male from last season. He's a fife. You can see they're kind of, uh, kind of round-shaped, perky little birds, kind of resemble robins. They're very popular, especially in England. Here is an older male that I've had for about four years now. He's the father of some of my others. And this is a bird that was gifted to me from a friend that's also a male. He's the father of the little yellow, bright yellow variegated bird you saw. And this is one of my Irish fancy. They're, they're thinner. They're supposed to be cigar-shaped birds. So he's a real cute little guy, very perky. Oh, and also, in addition to the seed mix and the egg food mix, I give my birds fresh greens, and the easy thing to feed them that they really love is broccoli. So you get them a little fresh broccoli, break off a little piece, they'll peck away at it happily all day long, and that helps get them their vitamins too. Here is the mother bird from last year. There she is. And what do we have in our other cages in the back here? I have a Raza Española sitting in her nest very happily. I have an Irish Fancy male. We've nicknamed him George. George is our favorite little guy here. And we have another Irish Fancy. This is George's uh, nest mate, an Irish Fancy hen. And down here we have uh, this is a fife from two years ago. She was born two years ago. A very dear little thing. So there we have the collection of birds. So I hope you enjoyed that quick little tour. I don't have a lot of birds, but I have a few and they keep me busy. Mainly cleaning the floor because birds are very messy. I have to vacuum the floor here every day. So if you're gonna think about getting into canaries, invest in a good vacuum you're going to be vacuuming a lot. This morning I gave everybody their sidekick condition. So this bird is sort of picked through there, picked out its favorite seeds. There's still a lot left for the rest of the day. So today they had sidekick condition. Tomorrow they will have uh, sprouts. Pages are a little bit dirty because uh, it's been a couple of days since I changed the papers. What I do is I give the birds a little bird bath and then I'll change the papers after they bathe. It's a lot easier that way because they kind of make a big mess when they're bathing. Now you want to also 
make sure that they have fresh water at all times. Check their water every day. You may think that this uh, container will last you for several days, but I've had them leak and go empty within a day. So you have to check them every single day because the bird won't survive without water for 24 hours. So I've given my little guy his bathtub. If they're very comfortable with their surroundings, they will jump right in and take a bath. So let's see how long it takes him to jump in. And you want to put the bathtub away from the food. I've set the food over to the corners of his cage because if the water gets into the food cup, it'll spoil the seed. After a few days, it'll start getting moldy. So you don't want them to splash water onto their food. If they do, you need to just change the food dish, dry it real well, and refill it. They also need some source of calcium. I find the easiest method is to give each bird a cuddle bone. You can see the cuddle bone there in the back. There's a special holder for it. And I make sure that all my birds have a cuddle bone. Uh, there are also some grits that you can give birds, but I don't believe it's necessary to give canaries grits. And I believe uh, it can actually sometimes be harmful, so I've avoided giving grit to the birds. But there are grits that are high in calcium, and you can use those. Also, you don't want to give, uh, you don't want to use um, sandpaper perches because that will irritate their feet and can cause foot infections. Okay, it looks like he's maybe going to go down for his bath. It's because I'm watching him. He doesn't want to jump in. All right, I gave up on that bird taking his bath in a timely manner. So let's wait for this little guy to take his bath. Now a word about cages. You want a cage to be as long as you possibly can have it uh, horizontally so that they have room to fly back and forth. So this cage is about 30 inches long and they're made specially so you can put a divider in there for breeding. But if you don't plan on breeding, just get your bird the biggest cage with the uh, area where they can uh, actually fly back and forth a little bit. The exercise is good for them. Well, he enjoyed his uh, sidekick condition and he's enjoying his uh, broccoli. And of course, he hasn't hopped into the bathtub yet. Usually I put the tub in there and before I can get to the next cage, the bird is jumping in to take a bath. But of course, because I'm trying to film them taking a bath, they have no interest in the bath water. There he goes for the sidekick condition. Too many treats. Well, while he's eating, I'll explain another thing that I like to do. Canaries don't like drafts, and I cover my birds at night with this heavy cloth. Cover the cages all the way around. Um, that prevents the draft from coming in and making them ill. Another thing that it does, um, birds are very light sensitive. Light affects their uh, hormones. And if they have too much uh, sunlight, too many hours of sunlight, they will go into a molt. Too much warmth and too much sunlight. So what you should try to do uh, at the normal hour of sundown is to cover their cage or put them in a dark room where there's no artificial lighting and so that they'll have the natural hours of light and dark. That way it won't affect them adversely to have too much light or too much activity. Don't put them in your, uh, in your uh, family room, your TV room. Have them someplace else where they can have a quiet, undisturbed nighttime rest. Okay, let's see if the new girl wants to take her bath. She looks interested. Normally, if they're interested, they'll jump right in. And... The 
first a little drink. There she goes. They'll normally splash around a little bit. They'll get their head wet. They'll jump in depending on how much of a bath they want. They may splash more some days than others. Okay, there she goes. She's really getting into it now. They love to bathe. And generally the water goes all over the room, not just their cage. So I usually try to have the, uh, the floor vacuumed up so it doesn't make like a mud. I have a tarp under my birds and if I can kind of keep the seeds uh, vacuumed up from under there when they bathe and splash water everywhere. It doesn't make such a big mess. And once she's done, I'll take out the papers at the bottom of her cage and give her some fresh new papers. I don't like to use newspaper because it tends to, uh, the birds get down and walk on it and next thing you know their tail is all black from the ink on the newspaper. So I just use regular white computer paper. Where I do use the newspaper is in this uh, slide out tray. And there I'll put newspaper under there, but to avoid having to clean the uh, cage bars too much, I usually put computer paper in their cage as well. So there she is, very happy with herself. She'll dry off now. You don't want to give them a bath too late in the day. You want to give them a chance to dry off before it gets dark and it's bedtime. So I usually do it in the morning. Now this video is basically to uh, give you basic care instructions. We don't want to go too much into diseases because hopefully you won't come in contact with them. But I'll share with you a story of a problem I had over 20 years ago. I had a flock of fives. I had about 25 birds and I was tired of cleaning the mess and I thought, well, I'll put them out on the patio and let them house out there. Well, one of my birds got a mosquito bite. He got an avian pox virus. I took him to the avian veterinarian and he said there's nothing that you can do, the bird is going to die and all the other birds are going to get the pox virus from him and they're all going to die. And that's exactly what happened. There is a vaccine you can give canaries for pox virus and I think you have to give it, um, the vet will inject it in their wing and uh, I think it has to be repeated every year. But it's much easier to just avoid having them uh, in any kind of a way where they could be exposed to a um, mosquito bite. So if you keep your birds indoors, keep your screen doors shut, don't let mosquitoes in the house. If you take them outside, bring them in in the evening and avoid the mosquitoes problem. I also have a sister who raised Gloucester canaries and she had a problem. She did not isolate a new bird that she got. She put him right in with the rest of her flock. And unfortunately, that bird had air sac mites. So within a few days, she noticed him rasping, having trouble breathing. And uh, he had to receive some treatment for air sac mites. And those little mites, they spread quite quickly through the rest to the rest of the birds. So all of her birds had to have treatment for mites. So there's another lesson for you when you get a new bird. Keep them separate for a few days. I got this bird and I kept her separate for about a week. They, they recommend keep them separate for about two weeks. I think that might be overkill. I think in about a week you can know if your bird has got some kind of issue or disease going on. And she looks pretty healthy to me. So I went ahead and put her in with the other birds today. And she seems to be doing well. So that is my basic care and information on how to take care of your canaries. If you have any questions, just put them in the comment box down below and I'll answer them as soon as I can. Take care, enjoy your birds, and have a great rest of the day.